Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Public Podcast. I'm your host, Kinsey Grant, and today we are with Mark Bell. He's the CEO of Terran Orbital, a manufacturer of small satellites. And Terran had just announced a massive $2.4 billion contract with Rivada Space Networks, a European company focused on terrestrial connectivity. And I'm super excited to have Mark here today to talk about this deal and tell us more about how we got here and what it means. Mark, welcome to Public. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, excited, excited to be here. I imagine, and and we were just chatting before that this has been a pretty exciting week for you and for the team. So let's talk about this deal. Two point four billion dollars feels like a pretty big deal. So could you, Mark, put this into context, especially relative to other deals that Taryn has secured? Uh, just tell me a little bit more about what this deal means for you and for your business. So you are right. It is a pretty big deal. It actually is, to the best of our knowledge, the largest small satellite contract ever awarded in history. Uh, it is uh, just a br- groundbreaking event for not just us, but the industry of new space as a whole. Uh, it gives uh, validity to what we're doing. It shows people that new space is here to stay. It's real and, uh, and it's scalable. And this is just an exciting event. We're very thankful to Declan Ganley, uh, the CEO and chairman of Rivada, uh, for making this a reality for us. So tell me a little bit about the details of this, this tie-in with Rivada. What exactly will you be doing together? So they have us doing a lot of things. Uh, we're going to be designing, uh, manufacturing, and helping to uh, launch a constellation of satellites. Uh, we're building 300 satellites for them, uh, 288 plus some spares. We are very uh, excited about the opportunity for very high-speed internet that they will be providing in from space. Uh, their goal at the end of the day serves a lot of different markets, everything from agricultural to defense. And defense is really our bread and butter as a company. So we're very excited about that opportunity as well. And do you have any estimate for the timeline of the delivery for something like this? Obviously, this is a, a project with a lot of moving parts, a lot of scale. But do you have any idea of, of when this delivery might happen? Absolutely. We are scheduled to start delivering them by the middle of 2025. And we will we will finish our deliveries by September of 2026. Uh, all this is to meet the IT requirements uh, for them to maintain their spectrum and be operational. And you mentioned high-speed internet, some defense stuff. Can you tell me a little bit more about what exactly these satellites will be used for? Do you have any details as to, uh, you know, what share of this this delivery of 288 plus 12 spares, what they will be used for specifically? Uh, uh, unfortunately, at the request of Rivada, we're leaving the details up to them to announce. Uh, they'll be making some announcements in the next couple of weeks uh, as they file with the ITU uh, as to what they're going to be doing. All right. Makes sense. Now, I'd love to take a step back here and talk about this deal from the perspective of an investor. How would you suggest that investors think about this deal as part of your business as as a company? You know, does, does this create any sort of meaningful moment for investors or for potential investors in Terran? And how would you want to communicate the significance of this deal to those investors? So as a business, you know, uh, we look at it uh, in terms of we explain it ourselves to the street in terms of our backlog and how we burn off the backlog and then continue to add to the backlog. So in this case, we've now added you know, 2.4 billion to a backlog. Uh, we ended the backlog September 30th at over $170 million. Uh, this obviously is a tr- tremendous addition to the backlog. It pretty much guarantees our revenue numbers for the next few years. Uh, it also, as we march towards profitability in 2024, also guarantees that you'll know, get the EBITDA positive uh, in the first half of 2024. So we're very excited about that and, and, the, and the message that we're delivering to investors. So how does this play into the broader market sentiment that we have been experiencing over the last several months? You know, given the nature of, quite frankly, everything in, in the investing space today, does this deal come at a, a time that feels significant to you or to your investors or potential investors? You know, how, how are you figuring this deal and what it might mean for your future profitability with the broader economic landscape that we're facing right now? You know, we're, we're coupled in a space called new space facts, for lack of a better term. You have you launch, you have data as a service, you have manufacturing, and uh, that pretty much defines the three buckets in new space facts. SPACs have had a, are, you know, been a four-letter word, unfortunately, uh, since they started. It's been, uh, had a, got, a, got a bad rap. 
And but you have a lot of people. You have people in the launch who build it and hope they will come to the launch satellites. You have data as a service. Once again, they build constellations and hope they will come. And then you have manufacturing, and we're different because we don't build anything until someone calls and hires us. So we don't take a lot of risk. We're a very, very risk-free business. So we're unique in that in that aspect. Um, you know, we are burning cash like everybody else, but the way we're burning cash is in expanding our manufacturing abilities. Today, we're running seven days a week, two shifts a day, uh, in order to get product out the door. We have 61 satellites on the assembly line. We can produce 10 satellites a month today. With the opening of our new factory, April 1st, we'll be able to produce 20 satellites a month. And we have things going on to expand that dramatically by the end of the year. So we will continue to keep up with demand as long as we continue to manufacture and deliver on time, we will continue to succeed. On the Space Development Agency, which is part of Space Force, uh, we're building the transport layer, which is a communications network for the DOD for the future in space. Uh, we delivered SDA's Tranche Zero, which is the first 10 satellites on time and ahead of schedule. And we were the only ones to deliver on time and ahead of schedule. And uh, we are currently in manufacturing in Tranche One, which is 42 satellites for the SDA. And uh, excited about the SDA opportunities coming forward. The SDA came out and said publicly, those who deliver on time will win, will continue to win. And we deliver it on time. Yeah, definitely. And and I think that you bring up an, an interesting point here with uh, some of these examples of, of deals that you have participated in or, or worked on, um, deals that you have delivered in the past. I understand that a lot of the work that Taryn has done before has been government intelligence focused kind of contracts. Talk to me about how that experience might differ from something like working with a, a Rivada or working with a more commercial side entity. What are the differences between those two types of deals? You know, with, with government is, uh, the U.S. government is, uh, who's our, specifically our largest customer, uh, the DOD and the intelligence community, and uh, the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, is the only thing the Democrats and Republicans have agreed un almost unanimously on for the past 61 years. It has, so we are, uh, it's a great customer. Uh, the only risk factor we really have is world peace, which I'm told isn't coming anytime soon. And so it is, and they, they keep allocating more and more money to space assets because they realize Ukraine showed how we didn't have enough assets in space to monitor what was going on. So with all with 36 conflict zones around the earth, you have a lot of things that need to be monitored on a regular basis. And from space is much easier to do than just flying over countries. You sort of the balloons that China sent over the U.S. It's not a pragmatic way to do things. Doing it from space is a much better cost-effective way uh, to monitor activities around the world. I'm curious about how space as an industry, and, and understanding that that is a very large umbrella term for a lot of different, um, very specific sub-industries, but I'm curious about what the future of space as an industry looks like. To your point, given what we have learned about its importance or its relevance over the last 12 or 18 months uh, on, on the global stage, how do you expect I specifically investment interest in space as an industry to evolve in the, the coming years. So we're, we're seeing space become an asset class. And you know, we, I just, I, the, this week I was at the Citibank and the Barclays Investor Conferences, and we heard the same thing from investors. I need to invest in space, just like they would invest in agriculture or healthcare or technology. Space is becoming an asset class. They need to have exposure and their funds on so we're seeing a lot of people of interest in space, but there's not a lot of people to pick from. You have a lot of companies out there that were uh, using a SPAC as public venture capital. Uh, we're unique in that aspect as we're uh, one third owned by Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed has invested $160 million into Terran Orbital. So we're very well capitalized. And we have a partner in Lockheed as we have something called the Strategic Cooperation Agreement with them that runs through 2035 where we build small satellites for Lockheed up to a thousand kilograms. And so that is a huge, uh, a huge advantage we have over a lot of these other companies that went public, uh, but they used it as public venture capital. So, uh, you know, companies like us will be around for the, for the long term. 
Definitely. And and I, I'm curious too, kind of along the same line here, when we talk about public companies uh, that, that operate in space in some capacity, often the first kinds of companies that might come up at the dinner table when you talk about investing in space are these flashier companies like the the SpaceX's of the world or the, you know, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Galactic, I guess is, is the space version. But I, I'm curious how your work as a small satellite manufacturer might be impacted by some of these flashier names in, you know, space tourism or sending people to Mars. Is that something that you concern yourself with at all? Um, so I could, you know, we, we look at people like SpaceX as pioneers in the industry. Uh, but, you know, they have 18 years. They've been, you know, moving, you know, moving along to get where they are today. And Elon's done a phenomenal job at that. Um, and, you know, the way we look at it is, you know, they invented, the, they created the launch vehicles to space. You know, uh, 11 years ago, we created the CubeSat, uh, 13 years ago, I should say. Uh, so we gave birth to this whole industry of small LEO satellites as uh, the inventors of the CubeSat. So that gives us a huge, uh, so, you know, we build the satellites, he launches them. And uh, so it's a, it's a great pair. And we've been very, the industry, you know, we don't have the flash that they might have, uh, but we will have the profitability they don't have. And that is, uh, so we'll be profitable long before both either of them are. And uh, that's what shareholders want at the end of the day. Right, right. So with that, I want to just talk for a second here about what this deal specifically with Rivada means for the future of of Terran. And we had talked about the delivery timeline and some of the the big aspects of how this deal is incredibly significant for you and for your business. But tell me about the implications of the deal on the business beyond revenue. Are you planning to expand the team? Do you hope to to ink any more similar deals to this one in the future? What does the next you know six, twelve, and eighteen months look like for Terran? You know, uh, this deal gives us a lot of credibility uh, that we can do large constellations. We've had an enormous amount of people reaching out to us in the past 24 hours about other work we could be doing. Uh, it'll help us to speed up our industrialization and our robotics that we've been uh, excelling at. And uh, we will be building our first robotic assembly facility next year. And this gives us the ability to continue to increase the functionality of the satellites while lowering the cost. So we'll be able to provide people more functionality, better, a better product uh, at a lower price point. All right. Well, that makes a ton of sense. And and Mark, I really appreciate your time here today. Uh, co-founder and CEO of Terran Orbital. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing some time with us here on Public in what I'm sure is a very, very busy week for you. Uh, we will be back next month with even more news and views from the space economy. Mark, thank you again. Thank you for having me.